Greetings, Ani, Bojo, Kwe Kwe. It's Catherine here from Moonstar Lodge in Central Ontario. And as always, uh, welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you've been with us before. We run Moonstar Lodge and that's Indigenous Spirituality, Arts and Education. So I'm bringing to you some divination uh, traditions which go back for me to 1974 when I began curating a tarot collection that's expanded to tarot and oracles and divination from around the world. And uh, today I want to talk about the week of January 16th through to the 22nd. We are right now in fourth quarter of the first moon cycle of 2023. And that's talks with relations in the indigenous form of the grandmothers of the moon. Um, some indigenous communities refer it to us to it or to these moon cycle names as the clan mothers. But I was taught grandmothers and I follow my elders. So we're moving out of the first moon cycle of talks with relations and moving into, before the end of this week coming, uh, Wisdom Keeper, who is the grandmother of the second moon cycle. So she enters things on January 21st in the afternoon at 3.53 p.m. Let me tell you a little bit about Wisdom Keeper. She is the protectress of sacred traditions, the keeper of the stone libraries and earth history, the guardian of the remembering and the art of memory, the mother of friendship, planetary unity, and mutual understanding. She teaches us the arts of self-development and expansion, how to access planetary memory, personal recall, and ancient wisdom and knowledge. She teaches us how to understand the wisdom that every life form holds and its missions. How to be a friend and to restore friendship by honoring the viewpoint of all life forms. She teaches us how to honor the truth. A bit of synchronicity here because I felt called to pull out decks that relate to the moon and planets. Uh, some of the decks I have used before in our readings in the last three years. And a couple of them are from, shall we say, the vault. I have never used them on camera. And uh, they've always felt rather personal and um, more with indigenous traditional knowledge. So the decks I'm using are the Star Song Oracle by Delphina Rose. This is one of the ones I've never used on camera before. The Galactic Heritage cards, which I have used and are a big hit when I do. The Wandering Tarot, which was a surprise to me as a mass market deck, how beautifully done, because it contains a lot of artwork relating to crystals and stars. And crystals are, of course, the stone people and relate to Wisdom Keeper. The Wandering Moon. The Wandering Soul Oracle. The Wandering Echo. And the Star Codes Astro Deck. I have many, many, many other astrologically uh, and... Uh, stellar solar decks, planetary decks, but these are the ones that seem called to bring forth their knowledge today. So, um, let's go to the cards. So our week starts on the 16th with the full moon very mysterious. This moon shows us both its 
dark and its light selfhood. It has a keyhole here and it is the key when we use it in the way of right relationship to unlocking a number of things that uh, are showing themselves this week. It's clarified actually by one of the Delphina Rose cards which represents the south door or the south gate on the medicine wheel. And this is about playfulness and bringing light into situations. Um, it represents summer, it represents um, just having some fun. So if we are dreaming with the wheel, if we are thinking about the, the new moon that's coming up and how we can uh, take on the attributes of Wisdom Keeper, it's important to look at light and shadow. It's important to seek keys that are going to unlock some of the wisdoms for the week, but also do so from a playful perspective. Remembering that the south gate on the medicine wheel is about summertime, high action, play, being outside. It's not necessary for us to go outside. I'm just saying that bring a playful attitude to what you seek as you work with your intuition this week, preparing as we prepare for this uh, new moon. We have the World Card, and the World Card is the completion of the Major Arcana Cycle in most decks. It's taking um, an awareness that things have come to an end. So we have, for example, um, the, the Nine of Wands represented by these crystals up here. It's something has come to an end. Wands are fire. Fire is spiritual connection bringing something that creates passion. So the clarifying card here is Ignite. And Ignite is about setting fire to a new passion, bringing something new into being because something else up here is coming to an end. Part of this dreaming with the uh, fourth quarter of Talks with Relations moving into this new moon is the Four of Swords, and the Four of Swords is very much about contemplation, rest. It's a deep sense of rest, clarified here by the Self card. Now this card in the, um, the secondary Major Arcana, um, the Wandering Echo, is represented by a card that doesn't normally exist in the Major Arcana, which is the Self card. And this Self card is uh, talking about illumination. So we have a moon image and we have illumination. We have a moon image and we have illumination. We have completions and we have fire. Um, this, this is very much about becoming aware through our intuition of the role of the self as we move forward. It's asking us to bring light in and intuition in on the deep aspects of self. In this deck, this is asking us to individually look at our sun signs. So I'm a Pisces. Whatever sun sign you are, it's saying this is who you are in your purest form. You came here to bring into the world collectively the energies of your particular sun sign. So by all means, look at your sun sign in regular Western astrology, but also look at the position of the uh, moon cycle that you were born into because that brings tremendous um, information to bear in a sense of the balance that's being asked for here. The next card is the Eight of Swords in reverse. So it means we're coming out of a place of internal con uh, conflict and a conflict that is about fear of being bound and being held. Um, there's a tremendous amount of anxiety with the Eight and Ten of Swords. But this is, you're not stuck, and you're recognizing you're no longer stuck, which is very important. It's being clarified here by the Temperance card. 
So temperance is about bringing balance between our earthly walk and our spiritual walk, but it's it's a perfect balance. It's alchemy. It's um, a different take on the kind of energies of the ma the magician card. So we are we are definitely looking at balance in every one of these cards so far. We have the three of stars, and stars are in this case this is about friendship and connecting. What's interesting is it's clarified here. Um, you know, we're coming out of alone time. These are cards about being alone and being in our heads. And now we're looking at, at making collective gestures of gathering with friends. But this card from the Galactic deck, the Galactic Heritage cards, is Vega. And Vega is telling us we have a feeling of homesickness thinking about the past. Um, when I looked at the concept of the Vega archetype here in the Galactic Heritage, it talks about humans having a lot of sense of nostalgia and a sense of homesickness at, at certain times of the year, but in certain periods of life, as it relates to their childhood, simpler times, their earth family. But what this card is talking about is that's kind of a, a misdirection of what homesickness really is. We have forgotten where we've come from. And this is a homesickness for source. We, we feel disconnected uh, from source. So we feel directionless. We don't know purpose of life. We don't remember karmically why we chose to ever show up in this life form. So coming back to this Four of Swords, coming back to the full moon, coming back to the self, this whole week is about calling us to take that wisdom walk with Wisdom Keeper as we approach the time when it is um, her presence is felt to say, have a look at what it is that you're pining for or what you might be feeling is lost. Is it external to you or is it internal with your connection to source? That's a very important thing this week. In terms of the next card here, we have the Nine of Wands and crystals are part, of course, of the stone people. And the stone people are about, um, again, the history of everything on the earth. They, they hold the history of where we've come from right back to before the dinosaurs. And so our nine of wands here is recognizing again that a, a cycle is complete. You will retain the knowledge of this completion cycle Quite often in some decks, it's showing um, almost a defensive, kind of beaten up looking person <laughs> in the Rider Waite Smith decks anyway. Uh, kind of a guarded person defending what they've accomplished. And sometimes we do have to do that. If we have a very distinct purpose in life, or a passion or something we've gone after and other people are poo-pooing us and saying, oh, you'll never finish that. Once we do get it finished, we are in a position sometimes to be defensive of it. But just recognize that you don't need to be because you are moving on. You don't have to hold on to it. It's, it's done. It's in the books. The last card of the week is the opposite. We've got the moon and the sun. Here's the sun again. The sun breaking through a hole in a broken wall. The sun is so much about the enlightenment, the bringing the light in to clarify everything that's happening. So what's happening? We have transits. Transits represent the climate within which we are functioning. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. 
Transits say that the planets around us are moving, moving, shifting. If you think of transits in astrology, if you work with astrology, you'll understand that we're moving between planetary alignments actually and within our own lifetime symbolically. So things are changing. We are moving from ends of cycles aware of where we're going, reclaiming concepts of self, getting ready to finish off, and we're now transitioning. But the light is there. And it's interesting, this last um, Delphina Rose card is about the West Door. So everything that we're working toward, at the beginning of the week, we're working for things which will manifest with the energies of the south, the playfulness. And by the end of the week, we're looking at the west door, which is assessment and uh, maturity. It's about um, resolution. And I'm, I'm looking, struggling here for a word that might make a perfect awareness. But it's an illumination here. It is in its, its own form of illumination. So whatever's happening this week is taking you through to the time of autumn equinox into the fall. So this is powerful. You can flip the camera, Brian. This is a powerful week coming up. Um, it's easy to say, oh my goodness, we're in the third week of January and, you know, the, the month is flying by and just be focused on January. But please don't be just focused on, on January. This speaks to karmic identity, karmic movement, not in a, um, an aggressive way, but rather an assertive way. We are resolving karma and we are steadily bringing something to bear which has an impact on our legacy. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this reading and if you did please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if that feels right to do so you get notifications of when I post uh, new videos. Down below in the descriptions, you can send me a coffee because goodness knows I can't do these readings without coffee. Um, thanks to Brian for getting these edited and put up. And by all means, leave us a comment. I like to interact and discuss things. All right. Aho. Have a blessed week.